Right, hi guys, today it's 28 degrees and we're taking the two CV apart. More specifically, today we are changing the points and condenser because yesterday it went in to the local Citroen specialist to have its front kingpins done and a very nice job he did of it too. And on the way back, sod's law, it conked out at the side of the road and I had to be towed back by a Honda CRV, which is a um, little bit embarrassing. But anyway, it's happened before, it just suddenly cut out as if someone had turned the ignition off. And when it does that, that's usually a sign that these fellows are due replacements. 2CVs seem to be very, very sensitive in the electrical department. They either work perfectly and then the southern part of the ignition system will wear and then they just suddenly stop. So today we went on a part to try and track down points and condenser kit, which uh, was a little bit difficult at such short notice. It does really need a full service, oil and everything, but it has, because this has caught me slightly by surprise, I don't have the filters and the grease to do all the proper bits, so today is just a, fi a quick fix to get it running again so I can enjoy it in this weather with the roof off, hopefully. So here we have the beast under the bonnet. For those that don't know, the 2CV has a 602cc flat twin air-cooled engine which uses a wasted spark system like an old motorbike which means that the spark plugs fire twice every revolution, once on ignition and then once wasted on the exhaust stroke which means it doesn't need a distributor, it just has a double-ended coil which is this thing here with HT leads coming out either end so they fire at the same time and go to both of the plugs down there and there and then behind the fan uh, the fan is driven off the crankshaft but driven off the end of the camshaft is a simple contact breaker with a condenser which just goes round and breaks the circuit each time so there's no um, no rotor arm and no distributor which is very simple but it tends to me because it's running at well, it's working twice as hard as a normal system they tend to wear out quite quickly so they need doing every sort of 6,000, 10,000 miles or so so the job is we've got to get the fan off which is always fun and then take all the waterproof um, rubber guards behind that which keep the spray out, keep spray out of the ignition. Take the ignition apart, take the old points and condenser out, and put the new ones in. Set the timing and see if it goes. Guard off. So now the guard's off, which is the easy bit, we have to get the fan off, which is held on, if you can see it. I have to let the camera focus. Yeah, there we go. So you can see there's a bolt in the middle of the starter handle dog, which holds the fan onto a taper. The, ta the end of the crankshaft is a taper fit. So you should, in theory, just be able to give the fan a sharp tap and it'll fall off but of course it's never that easy and it usually requires some brute force and ignorance to get it off but we'll see. So first we need to get the bolt and the middle out, usually that needs a special slim fit box spanner but fortunately I have a socket that is just the right size and can put it in gear. Fortunately the good thing about being two CVs you can put it in gear from under the bonnet. <coughs> go and bolt is loose but it usually doesn't come out properly which is good because it means you can't lose it. Now there are people have various techniques for getting two CV fans off and filled with pullers and common. I prefer the breaker bar or the uh, big socket extension and a hammer. Whack it at the top, whack it at the bottom and usually if you keep doing that off it will come.
Have a go. Ta-da. So behind the fan, this is the end of the crankshaft here. That's the drive belt to the alternator up there, which I'll have to slacken in order to get it back on. Uh, these two things are the pipes going from the sump to the oil cooler, which is there behind the fan. And then this is just the rubber casing to keep water and muck out of the ignition, which is held on by these cross beams here, which just have bolts on them, so they need to come off. size. Yes. Are they eight? Yes, they are. And as always, there's one down at the bottom where you can't get the socket extenders on and there's not quite enough room for the socket to get. So you have to use a spanner and do it the long way around. Fortunately, one is usually covered in oil, so it comes out nice and easily. says as he struggles to undo the spanner. Undo the undo the spanner, get a grip. Undo the bolt. And this should just peel off like that. So now we've got the rubber bit out of the way. You can see this is like the front of the engine you're looking at. The crankshaft here. This is the box with the points in, the condenser hanging underneath. Um, there's not much else to point out yet. Yeah, drive belt, can tuck that out of the way down there, which won't stay. That's the fuel, that's the petrol pump there. Uh, and the circular bit behind the points box has uh, a pair of sprung laden weights inside, um, so they move, you know, it's a centrifugal thing, which is the ignition advance. It doesn't have a vacuum advance, the 2CV. It's deemed too complicated and unnecessary. So, this is the next thing to take off unscrew that, see if there's anything horrible in there. And there we are. That is the points kit, or points set, of a Citroen 2CV. So yeah, this is the points. Here yeah, there's the breaker, which, which as the name implies, is the uh, it just breaks that contact here. It's powered by this double load cam on the end of the camshaft. And then this is the wire here which goes up here and out here, up here to the coil onto right there, that connector there. And then the purple connector on the other side. This one is the feed from the battery, from the ignition. So all that happens is that most of the time this is closed and is making the contact so that the coil is earthed and as it spins around, as it opens, it opens a little bit, much, you know, much less than that, but that's the idea, like that. When that happens the coil is no longer earthed, but it has a huge amount of electrical, ele electrical energy, let's try and say that a bit slower, in there, which has to go somewhere, and so it dumps itself down the HT leads to the spark plugs, which are earthed, but because they have a gap in them, create a spark, and that's where the spark comes from. And obviously, if the point contacts are bad, or if the gap is too small or too wide, or it's not set to open at the right time, you'll get problems. In this case, I checked last night, the spark is very, very weak. So there's not enough power getting to them. But we'll uh, set everything up right, and hopefully it will be good. So the next stage is to get the box holding the points out, which is this, these two bolts here on either side. And then this will lift out and we can take the condenser and the points out off the car, which is a bit easier. And 
useless at getting false. Says, no, as usual, I'm wrong. So, like 90% of the things on the card, they'll probably be 11. Yes. I really should learn one of these days to always think it's 11, not 13. But then I'm used to land drones, so everything is much bigger. When I got the 2CV, I was using whole sections of the uh, socket sets and spanners that I'd never used before. And on the Landro, there's nothing shorter, than, nothing smaller than 11 or so. And 11's, you know, most of it's 13 or 7 16 if you're dealing in the old money. So, pop that, connect to there, and there we go. At least, unlike last time, I did this, it's not full of oil which was well, not what was helping it last time, um, because the oil filler breather, which you can't really see in that shot, but it's up here, it connects to the engine block down there, the gasket there was leaking, and all the oil was just going down there, down there, into the points box, that you can see resi residue there. But, uh, but there you can, you know, that's the centrifugal bit thingy I was talking about in there. So, that's the points box, so we can take that apart at our leisure and fit the new stuff. So here we are, I've come inside, a bit cooler in here, it's better than uh, taking it apart on the garage floor which is all dusty and full of leaves and other stuff you don't want in your points box. So it's all held together just with little flat head screws. One. The long one which holds all the bits together, and the condenser comes out, sits on this little cradle by itself, there's the old one. Clean that up and the point set okay, so that's how you adjust the gap. Yeah, if it slides in that little slot there. We'll do that on the car. go. Yeah, that's the bit that flew off, it's the little plastic cradle, like so. So here are all the new bits, and we just need to make sure we put them together in the right order. Fortunately I have the Haynes Book of Lies here, which you can't see, it's, it's, over, it's over there somewhere, out of the camera shot. Of course, I shouldn't have said that, I should have just said I can do it from memory, but I can't. So... So that's the top point, or the bottom point. Which goes over... That thing like that. And the little... Screw... Which keeps the contacts... It sets the contact distance. In there. Then we have the rotor arm, oh, the, not the rotor arm, breaker arm. Which I believe I've just put in upside down. Yes, I have. There we go, like so. And that sits in the little cradle, like that. So 
So that sits in its little cradle like that. Then, in in order, we have thing from condenser. Spade connector, for the feed to the coil, then how can that work? That goes through there. That's very helpful of them to say that. There we go. It all makes sense. You wouldn't think I've done this before about five times, but I have. But I always forget exactly how it goes each time. Spring into place. I'm just going to do that up a little bit so that it doesn't all go ping like it did when I took it out. And now we're going to put this in the right way up. but I can't help that so it will all magically come good on the, on the film there we go so tap that in like that fold that and like that make sure you get it the right side of the contact ha ha there we go wasn't that a professional job I knew exactly what I was doing at all times so can tighten up that so it's something like that And there's one more little screw holding that on there. Damn magnetic screwdrivers. And what do, oh, I've made the error of not flicking that over the end. Schoolboy error, but inevitable. Sorry. Hopefully, he says, I'll be able to just hold it. Pin Hopefully, as I was saying, I hope we'll be able to just pinch it all together, yeah. So that goes through there. And then with my third hand, there we go. And there we go. That is now done properly, he says. No doubt stay tuned and you will find that I have in fact missed something. I will only find out when I try to put it back together on the car, but that is the next stage and we'll see. Now to put the points box back on is just... Refitting is the reversal of removal, as the Haynes manual is so fond of telling us. I can see from the marks, which I actually just clean up a bit. So as, as I was saying, you can see from the marks where the roughly where it should be timing-wise. But we'll have to adjust that properly later. So flip that down. Put it. Oops, don't trap the glove in the points. There we go. 
should be something like that. And ah, you know how I was saying earlier how there'll be something that I'll find that I've done stupid when I put it back on the car. Well, it's happened. This spade connector is meant to go on that spade terminal here, but it can't because it's meant to be pointing up like that so that it can sit on there. And I've put it on facing down where there's no space to get Although in my defence, that is how it was in the book. I suppose there's no defence at all really because I should know better. But, if I can find it, here we are. Yeah, but here's, this is the diagram showing you how the points box goes together. There is the spade connector pointing down. Although anyone with half a brain would probably be able to tell that this bit here goes up to allow the spade connector to go up. But I didn't. Never mind. Let's see. Easily sorted. I'm getting a sense of deja vu already. I'm sure I've taken this thing off already today. So now that's back in. We can set the points gap properly, which we use the feeler gauges. Now the gap for this is something again. I can never remember these things off the top of my head, but I always check anyway. Contact breaker gap 0.35.45 mil. Are these mil um, feeler gauges? Oh, they're bilingual feeder gauges, that's okay. They go up to four, they go up to 0.35, let's set, set it for that one then. So the trick is to get the points fully open on the heel of the can, as the expression says. They look incredibly tight to me, they're hardly open at all. Oh no, anything they are wide. That's now a bit on the wide side. I think because that we're setting this, because we're using the gauge, the feeling gauge is right at the bottom of the factory range. I don't mind them being a little loose. Tweak it up a bit. There. That's a nice. It's just starting to drag. It's a little. I say it's a little bit. Loose, if anything, but because it's right on the bottom of the range, that's okay. Uh -huh. Just check it on the other can. I couldn't get my head around this when I first did this because I just sort of hadn't quite. I hadn't got it set in my head that it was a wasted spark system. I couldn't work out how this worked. Opening it twice a revolution like this, but it does. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so time to put the cover on and then time it. Now, I don't think you'll be able to see that. If so, I will cut it out of the video. If not, then all my worries will be for nothing when I see it on the big screen. But uh, here on the flywheel, I've, there's a red paint mark. You line up with the red paint mark just there, which tells you the timing point. Well, that's the factory timing point, but you need to adjust that for because because uh, modern petrol's got more bang in it. You have to run the timing slightly later. So I have found on this one, it's happiest if you set it just one tooth on, and then you do the timing. So that's how we have to set it up. So to actually check the timing, we need the ignition on. to rig up a test lamp between this terminal of the coil, slide that back 
there and a good earth so we know when the contact breaker is opening. I've taken the cover off again just because it's very good at showing exactly what's going on it means that if this all works and it, we can start it up it means that um, I can film it running with the breaker box open which is quite cool. Um, so I now have my test lab rigged into the feed for the contact breaker which goes from down the blue terminal down the wire through into the front of the fan and then along there to there. I need to find an earthing point like the wing attachment there and now I'll have to put the camera down and put it on the tripod for this but when I t as I turn the points box to set the timing I'm waiting for the light just to come on here which shows that the contact breakers are just beginning to open. So here's the test lamp on earth which actually is on already. Turn it so it's off and then we turn it back very slowly. Oh, it jumps it's like there. You want it so it's the lamp you may not be able to see the lamp in bright light I'm afraid but I'll take my word for it. There it's on. Off. On. So good that in fact just touching the box makes it flicker off. So I'm going to just try and get a smidge more. Yeah, that is consistently on. Just. And after that, so uh, tighten it up. More. 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 Still on. Good. So it's timed, it's gaffed. I just whip out that bank bolt. I will try starting it up to see if all this has worked. Alright, fingers crossed, Let's see if that has worked. Will it go? all the cranking I did yesterday at the side of the road, seeing if it, I could get it because yesterday it was running, it was a run on one cylinder, and I kept trying and trying, and it obviously got the battery flat, so now it's not good enough. Okay, I'll whack another battery in and see what happens. All right, the second battery's in. Moment of truth, click two. Satisfying. That's the points whirling away. Okay, switch it off and put it back together. Oh, that's made me very happy. The points cover back on. Next up is the rubbery thing. Now it doesn't matter which one of these goes where, they are exactly the same, but you can tell from the marks where the washers were, and I'm afraid I always like to put them back where they came from, because that's just how I roll. I like that. So that's all. Now it's, uh, I need to slacken the alternator off so I can get the belt back around the fan. Which, this, which requires, if I 
I seem to remember it requires two spanners of different sizes for some reason. That's the other thing with two CVs, because everything, everything's so small. Everything's packed in. Unlike a Land Rover, everything tends to be nicely spaced out. It's always a good idea to put a dab of copper grease on the crank nose just to keep the fan from seizing up so that next time it comes off nice and easy. Ooh, it's all hot. Yeah. Belt goes on. So that's the fan grill on, and that's it. That is how you do the point of condenser on a Citroen 2CV.